I don't generally like running. I believe in training for rising gently up and down for the bench. Life is like a marathon. It's a good long race that lasts a long time, Lord willing. But you don't decide on Saturday to run a marathon on Sunday. Marathons take preparation, vision, and training. The Apostle Paul says that we are supposed to do the same thing in life. We are supposed to discipline and train our bodies as the race ahead of us is long. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I don't fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. Your body is trainable. That's actually very exciting news because the scriptures also say that offering our bodies is worship. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Training and discipline, uh, disciplining the body is also worldwide. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but then rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. What a great perspective to have about your body. It is a living sacrifice, an instrument of righteousness in the hand of God. That is a good reason to be joyful if we ever seen one. Oh God, I am so glad that I can prepare myself to resist the world and better myself for you. Continue to give me strength as I settle in for the long haul. I worship you as I change and offer my whole self to your will. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your 2020 Impact Report. For centuries, the word broadcasting described the action of peasant farmers as they sowed seed by casting it as broadly as their supply of seed and the strength of their arms would allow. Then all the beginning of the 20th century's modern technology made it possible for people with a message, including Christians, they spread their news like farmers sowing seed. They began to broadcast far and wide. Peace and farmers were not carelessly throwing away precious seed as they broadcast. They were intentionally spreading it with the conviction that God would make it grow and reproduce. Paul applied the analogy of his Christian ministry and said, I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. Paul's words remind us that both agricultural and gospel ministry require a partnership between sowers and God who makes things grow. 
though the work you and I do may pale in comparison to the work he does, he graciously allows us to be part of it nonetheless. The Bible helps you to identify and catalog the sowing and watering you have been doing through your support of the truth. Giving you uh, statistics is rel relatively easy and informative. Accurately measuring divine activity is beyond your abilities and belongs in the realm of mystery and begets reverent uh, oh. Looking around beyond the physical, health is not valued till sickness comes. After God created Adam and Eva's body, he said everything was very good. But that was before sin. That was before Adam and Eve were kicked out of Eden. Sadly, we no longer live in the best place to take care of our bodies the way we want need to. This is bad news because despite its complexity and despite its importance or even partly because of this, the human body is vulnerable to things it was never designed to withstand. Your body is susceptible. God intended for the human body to be used in a certain way. If it's used differently <coughs> than he <coughs> than he intended, there are going to be natural consequences. Too much alcohol, too much food, sex outside of the mono, uh, monogamous lifelong union. If you don't follow scripture, you can bring upon yourself up, uh, obesity, heart disease, alcoholism, sexually transmitted diseases, etc. God has our best interest in mind when he commands things like this. Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat. Please, we live in a world bombarded with the effects of the fall and sin. Many things may come upon us through uh, through no fault of our own, allergies, Alzheimer's, cancers, and so on. Many ailments are not uh, always caused by our action or result from any sins we may commit, but that does not lessen their effects in their slightest. Are you feeling the susceptibility of your physical body today? God's word puts it in a, a eternal perspective. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being reborn, uh, renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far, far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what it is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Eternal Father, give me the willingness and ability to look beyond the physical and the temporary today, that I might see what is unseen and find hope in the eternal. Hallelujah. Amen. Staying strong when your body weakens. He is no
no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Imagine you're sitting in the office of your family physician. But this isn't just any doctor. It's the office of the great physician. You thought it was just a routine visit to make sure everything is okay with your body but with gentle and serious eyes God asks you to sit down I have got good news and bad news he starts and deep inside you know him he uh, know he isn't making a joke might as well start with the bad news your body be deteriorate therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being re- renewed day by day when i was in college i set a life goal for myself to be able to dunk a basketball on my 15th birthday. The week of my 13th birthday, I developed excruciating pain in my lower back. It turns out I had three bad discs in the lower portion of my spine. I could barely work out. At the beginning of the 45th year, I decided to get serious about dunking that basket again. With a fresh New Year's uh, uh, resolution, I set out on a short run on January 1. Pop. By the middle of January, I was on the op- uh, operating table repairing a uh, torn meniscus. Then, just before I hit the big 5 to 0, I actually dunked it for the first time in 13 years. I worked really hard toward it and I was overjoyed but I also knew it was just a temporary accomplishment second uh, Corinthians chapter uh, 4 part 16 indeed yeah there is a there is plenty of bad news but there is amazing good news too in the days ahead May you may we get a clear, a clearer, truthful diagnosis, truth, a uh, true God's word. Great physician, thank you for our life-sustaining bodies. Use the reality of my deteriorating body to teach me about life. I don't want to lose heart. Renew my soul daily, Lord, as I look toward my future on earth and beyond. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Finding comfort in the face of death. Of all great wonders, none is greater than man. Only for death can be found no cure. A pastor was on a plain field with people who had just gotten off cruise ships in Miami. Everybody was still in the party mood, but then reality caught up with them. One of the uh, women in the front of uh, the plane began having a hard time. At all at once, she slumped forward, dead. 
right there in the middle of the airborne party. They landed in Dallas, removed the body, and resumed their journey to Los Angeles. The pastor told the f- uh, flight attendant, Mom, I am a pastor. If anyone would like to talk to me about what's happened, I am in seat 12A. The flight attendant responded, No problem, sir. We are going to give everyone free drinks for the rest of the flight. And she was right. Within an hour, everyone was back in the festive party move. Isn't that the way most of us try to deal with death? It's like we're floating along on this big uh, cruise ship uh, called life. Everyone in a while, somebody around us fell off the boat. It catches our attention for a moment, but rather than dealing with it, we grab on to anything we can to numb our feelings so the party can continue. But if we are honest, we must face the fact that all of uh, us will die physically. Your, bo- your body will die. Why? You, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? What are a myths that uh, appears for a little while and then vanishes? Aristotle said that death is the most terrible of all things. Epicurus said that death is the most terrifying of all things. But Jesus said that the truth set, sets us free. It is possible that believing the truth about death could bring life into clearer, more purposeful focus. Eternal God, let the truth about the inevitable death of my body propel me into a more vibrant life today. Hallelujah. Amen. What happens when you die? Our Lord has written the promise of resurrection not in book alone, but in every leaf in springtime. Okay, here's one truth that no one likes to think about too much, particularly after watching the latest zombie fic, your body will decompose. Yuck! No need to talk about this one much. Whether your body is cremated, put in a a casket, or donated to medical science, the result will be the same. All go to the same place. All come from dust, and to dust all return. What happens after that? There are several very popular theories out there, but none of them can be backed up with the Bible. Soul sleep. This is the eternal nap theory. The soul still exists, but in death it goes into an unconscious snooze forever. Nihilism. I call this the roof, the poof theory. After death, the soul and the spirit just kind of evaporate and case to cease to exist together. Reincarnation. This is the repeat theory. When any living thing dies, Each soul goes into other living things, actually becoming something else over and over again in a never-ending cycle of life and death. 
none of that sounds like a great option in my op opinion however there is definitely a flip side of the coin of death if you know jesus christ personally your spirit will devil for we live by faith not by sight we are confident i say and would rather to be away from the body at at home with the lord when the body dies our spirit is freed from tangible flesh and we can be with the lord at home home where we will be alive and aware home with the father experiencing his love without distraction home where we belong father release my grip on his physical life which i cannot keep so i can live freely in light of eternity amen hallelujah amen the hope you have in the resurrection a lawyer's dream of heaven every man rec reclaimed his property at the resurrection and each each tried to recover it from all his for forefathers have you ever seen a christ santa mom seed they look like little brownish shriveled up things but if you take the seed you and you bury it in the dirt what happens you get a, an amazing flower totally unlike the seed that was planted but someone may ask how are the dead raised with uh, what kind of body will they come uh, they come how foolish what you so does not come to life unless it dies when you so you do not plant the body that will be but just a seed perhaps of wheat or of something else but god gives it a body as he has determined and to each kind of seed he gives its own body do you see what paul is getting at here if our body usually little brownish shriveled up things dies how will god raise us and what will we look like when that happens we are foolish to even ask the question because the difference between what dies and what is resurrected is as different as the chrysanthemum seed is from its flower I think it's fair to let our imaginations run with this for a little while, while because I believe that our new bodies will be beyond anything that we can imagine. Holy Spirit, open my mind, please, to be able to imagine, even just a little bit, what life will be like with you once i shed this body of flesh amen hallelujah amen getting past guilt with the gospel finished for real self-condemnation is all too common among the believers in jesus but is that how god intends the christian life to be lived grace goes deeper too many people spend their lives chasing trinkets and transient treasures but god invites you to something deeper through the life death and resurrection of his son jesus god welcomes you to enjoy the rest of the a conscience that's clean and clear forever his grace ends the chase experience true rest in jesus it seems more people than ever are feeling exhausted depleted and teetering on the edge of 
burn out but God invites you to experience something so much better a life where you draw your strength energy and joy from resting in him how to focus on eternity death is no more than passing from one room into another but there is a difference for me you know because in the other room I shall be able to see imagine again the, that you are back in the office of the great physician God's diagnosis of death and decay has left you stunned your soul is reeling with that reality but now he is leaning towards you he is taking you by the hand and he is lifting your chin and looking you in the eyes he has something to say my child the dead the pain the decay it's all temporary an immeasurably small mom moment in light of the eternity that awaits you what lies beyond is incomparable the asthma the cancer the bruises scabs and scars these will not last trust me look to the future and see with the eyes of faith a heavenly timeless and painless existence an existence of an eternity different kind a body of uh, an eternity different kind be patient my child have faith for with a flash of flash of light you will be changed i am not making this up god has written to it done for us in his word the sun has one kind of splendor the moon another and the stars another and a star differs from a star in splendor so will it be with the resurrection of the dead the body that is sworn is perishable it's raised in perishable it's a uh, son in dishonor it's raised in glory it's son in weakness it's raised in power it's so a uh, son a natural body it's raised a spiritual uh, body in a flash in the winkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised in perishable and we will be changed you yes you, our physician bodies will decay die and decompose but we will be resurrected and our spiritual body will have an imperishable glory and power your body will be different not just healed and not just better but radically different the great physician is finished talking for the moment god pushes back and gives you a moment to let this soak in are you thinking about it i mean really thinking about it do you see the big picture now God, I know that this day will be filled with decay and death, but focus my heart on the full diagnosis. Make this future reality a practical true today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.